Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Paul is still over in Corneth, writing to the church at Rome. And uh, last week we finished up here in verse 21 of chapter 5, that is sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through Jesus, through, uh, through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Paul, uh, so what we have here is the first chapter 1 through chapter 3, verse 20, was talking about everybody under sin. Gentiles under sin, Jews under sin, everybody under sin. And then from chapter 3, verse 21 through the end of this past chapter is salvation. Righteousness has been imputed. You've been justified. Okay? Now Paul begins... <clears throat> with a rhetorical question, there were, Judea, or there were Jews going around and saying that Paul's preaching on grace uh, meant that, they were li they were, that uh, he was giving people basically a license to sin or the licensure to sin because of, how, because of what he taught on grace. And he starts out in chapter 6, verse 1, and says this, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? And his rhetorical answer to his rhetorical question is, God forbid. Or one translation says, never let this happen. Uh, I think either Weiss or Weymouth, hallelujah, <clears throat> that shouldn't be. And then he goes on and says this, how shall we that are dead, and here it becomes its premise, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Now, because of language and because of, uh, you know, uh, how things are translated sometimes, and because of the way they were translated 400 years ago and some of the speech was modified, sometimes we lose um, what the writer was trying to convey because language changes. Now, here we do know that death means to be separated from. What we're talking about here is that this becomes Paul's premise from through chapter 6 through 8, that the dominion of sin has been broken. We have been separated from the dominion of sin through the righteousness of God that's in Christ Jesus. We are no longer under, remember chapter 6, he said, you know, he talked about um, being dead to sin, live under righteousness, and all those different things over in chapter 6. Uh, not to yield, our, well, actually, I'm, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Jumping way ahead, I've been, reading, I've been reading all kinds of translations and stuff, and, and I'm thinking we've already preached chapter 6. I'm starting in chapter 6, aren't I? Hallelujah. I couldn't wait to get here tonight. I got all this kind of stuff bottled up, and I'm trying not to run ahead of myself. Hallelujah. How shall we that are no longer under the dominion of sin, hello, live in accordance with its dictates? This is really what he's saying here. How are we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? He is telling us that we're no longer, understand, if you're not under the dominion of, you're no longer under the authority of. And this becomes Paul's premise. And one um, uh, writer says this, that Paul's answer to those who accused him that saying grace would allow you to live in sin was, so, you know, the doctrine of grace, his answer to that, the misinterpretation of it was this, the doctrine of sanctification. And in reality, <coughs> hallelujah, in reality, chapter 6 begins the doctrine of sanctification. Okay, now the word sanctification, growing up Pentecostal, we used to testify that I was saved, I was sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Pray for me that I hold true to the end. And I'll be honest with you, I don't think a lot of us really even knew what sanctification was. We thought it meant beehive hairdos and burlap sacks for dresses and, um, you know, not going to the movie theater. All right? But sanctification in and of itself really means to be separated from something. So Paul begins his doctrine of sanctification with how can we that are dead no longer under the dominion. Now, not of sins, but of the, of, of the nature of sin. See, when you got born again, you were justified in your spirit. Your spirit became alive unto God through Jesus Christ. You were born again from death unto life. Hallelujah. Remember, Adam was the first man born again. He was born from life. Under death. He died spiritually. 
didn't cease to exist. He became separated from the life of God. Paul's doctrine of sanctification is pretty simple. You've been separated from the dominion or the authority of the nature of sin. Thus, the implication by implication, he goes on and carries this out. If we are not under the authority of it, we don't have to obey it. Amen. See, the misinterpretation I think some people place on grace is that grace makes you not sin, and that's error. So grace, grace strengthens you to walk out the new man. Hallelujah. So he goes on here and says, uh, Know you not that as many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death, Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism and death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should also. <clears throat> now, we also should do what? Walk in newness of life. J.B. Phillips' translation says it this way, that, that that life raises us to a new plane altogether. We're now walking in a new plane. Amen? All together, new different, different realm, praise God. How do different translations talk about that we're walking in, you know, this new life or newness of life or walking out of this life. Here it is. Here it is. You're no longer, ever say, I'm no longer under the dominion of sin. And if I'm not under its dominion, if I'm not under its dominion, if I'm not under its dominion, then I'm not under its authority. Satan, see, when you got born again, you were separated from the dominion of the nature of sin, meaning its authority to make you. Are you here? And Paul, he'll go on here. For if we've been planted, and I just love that. I, I, I kind of read the Phillips this, uh, this afternoon. I'd read Weist, I'd read Weymouth, I'd read the Amplified, I'd read some different versions. And, and when I got to Phillips and I read that, that he, that, that life has raised us up to a, a new plane altogether, I like to got up and run around my living room. Because that is what the new birth, that is what justification does. It takes you up to a new plane altogether, and the grace of God empowers you. To, doesn't make you, but it empowers you to walk in that new plane, in that new life. You're not bound by the dominion of the sin nature to obey it and the lust thereof, one pastor says. In time past, see, you were under the dominion of sin. The nature, not, not sins, you were under the dominion, of the, the dominion of the nature or the sin nature, and therefore you were bound to obey it. As an unbeliever, you couldn't help but sin. Sinners sin. It's what they do. But we haven't taught the church enough that when you got born again, the, the, the life of Christ raised you to a new plane altogether. You're no longer under the dominion of sin. You don't have to obey it. It can call you and say, hey, get over here and sin. And you can say, no. And it can't make you. It doesn't have the authority to make you any longer. Oh, the grace of God. That is the grace of God. Hallelujah. Not that it makes you not sin, but you've been raised into a new place and it empowers you to make that decision to walk free of it because you're walking out of the life of God. You're walking in a whole new plane altogether. Amen. For if we've been planted together in the likeness of his death, we, all, we shall also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. See, this is the doctrine of sanctification. We don't serve sin. Now, some of y'all remember the old show called the Flip Wilson Show. And Flip had an alter ego. And kind of like Tyler Perry does Medea, Flip was Geraldine. And Geraldine would go do stuff she shouldn't do, and then she'd just stop and go, the devil made me do it, honey. See, made me do it. 
<laughs> to the recreated spirit, to the born again believer, to him who is in Christ Jesus, you're no longer under the dominion of sin, therefore you don't have to obey it. Now you can choose to obey it, but you don't have to. It can't make you obey it. See, no more than that, God's grace doesn't make you obey God. And we're going to find that in this chapter. Amen? The doctrine of sanctification kind of, kind of comes up, sums up this way. Paul writes in another place, put off the old man and put on the new. These are things we do. By his strength, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Amen. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified by him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now, some folks try to interpret that to mean that if you're dead, then, then uh, you can never sin again. No, you're freed from sin. This whole passage, and you go, go study it out, study some, some, um, some the Greek scholars of church history, <coughs> and what they have come to understand is that the word sin right here is talking about the nature. You're freed, and really, we says it really well. I mean, this, his, a lot of his stuff on this chapter is excellent. I don't agree with everything he says, but a lot of his stuff, is this, this chapter is excellent, okay? We are freed from the dominion of the sin nature. He that is dead or separated from is freed from the dominion of the sin nature. Somebody ought to be running right now. Glory be to God. He that is separated from that nature, and, and, and I think we said it here, said it, separated eternally. Well, he entered in once of all to obtain an eternal redemption for us. I've been separated from the nature of sin. Amen. And now I am free from its dominion. Whoa, glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah, that'll melt the church of the first, cho first frozen chosen. Get them on fire for God. Hallelujah. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we should also live with him. What's talking about? Remember Jesus, Paul's already established in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, he that knew no sin was made sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. He established the doctrine of identification. Amen. And if we be dead with Christ, Christ came in the likeness of sinful flesh, became sin for us who knew no sin, and then we, he died, what, in our stead. So if we be dead with him, we also believe, glory to God, that we should also live with him. Knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more, death, here's that word, hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died in his sin once, but then he liveth, he liveth unto God. Verse 11. Everybody underline your Bibles. Can't write in your Bible? Go to our bookstore, get one we can write in ours. Caps asked me the other day, said, have you written in it yet? I said, no, I'm just using it. Well, you know, why don't you get rid of that one, go to our bookstore and get one. You can write in that one. I said, good one. All right. Verse 11. So Paul's established that if you're dead to sin, you're free from his dominion. Christ died. He died in the sin death once. He died in the sin once, but now he liveth, he liveth unto God. Then verse 11 comes where Paul now makes this applicable to your life. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead, separated eternally, indeed unto sin, or from the dominion of sin, the nature, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now stop, don't read any further. The Apostle Paul makes what Jesus did and what Jesus went through and what Jesus accomplished now vitally, a vital revelation, a living revelation for right now to the believer. If, since Jesus has done this, you reckon yourself also to be separated from the dominion of sin and alive unto God. What's, where is that? That's that new, that, that new plane all together. We're living in that realm of the life of God. Now I'm preaching a lot better. You're shouting. This is amen stuff. 
This is hanky stuff. Glory to God. This is on the end of the aisle. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. I'm telling you right now, I got, got down to church one time and down in the, the Eastern Carolina, and this little old man got up, and he, the whole service, he did this. Because he couldn't walk. And all he could do was right here. And then right behind was a woman with a hanky. And I was preaching on the blood. And the more I preached, the harder she weighed. And the harder she weighed, the harder I preached. And then his leg got to going a little bit faster. <laughs> Hallelujah. Likewise, reckon ye yourselves also to be dead indeed in the sin. Let, reckon yourselves to be separated from the dominion of sin forever. It no longer has the right to make you do anything. Why? Through Jesus Christ and love to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Verse 12. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Now here, here's the sanctification. You don't have to obey and since you don't have to to obey, and you're living in a new plane altogether, don't let it work in you. It, you can run it off. You can tell sin, no. Not, I'm going to live in sin because I'm under grace and get away with it because I'm still going to heaven. I can't earn my salvation. That's not what Paul, Paul came back and said rhetorically. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? How shall we who have been freed from the dominion of sin have our existence walking there? When we've been raised up into a new plane altogether. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Hallelujah. Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. Well, did, uh, most other translations, Weast, Weymouth, and even Phillips, don't yield your members as weapons of unrighteousness. Did Paul say that because you're under grace that you won't do that? No, he said because you're walking in a new plane altogether, don't yield your members there. You don't have to. Glory to God. You're walking in a new plan altogether. You're walking in the life of God. The greater one's on the inside of you. There's a power on the inside of you. God's grace has been administered to you. He strengthens you, glory to God. So you can look at sin square in the face and say this, you no longer have dominion over me, and I'm not going to do that. Amen. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Oh, what the joy that we're in the past. You tried to not do it to please God. Now you can do it because the greater one's on the inside of you. The grace of God that strengthens you has empowered you. God has freed you from the dominion of sin. And now you're walking in a different plane. What plane? The plane of authority where the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus rules. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, I feel like going all over me. <laughs> Hallelujah. But yield yourselves. Don't yield yourself as weapons of sin unto unrighteousness. Yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members. Talk about your body. People got this idea it doesn't matter what you do with your body. Paul says, don't use it, don't give it over to sin, where sin can use it as an instrument or weapon of unrighteousness. But yield to God. Go back to the first part of this chapter, where we now live a new life. We walk in newness of life. We walk in a new plane altogether. Remember, Philip said that. And yield your body, yield yourselves to God and your members as servants or as instruments or as weapons of righteousness unto God. Let, by, by telling, the, telling sin no, 
Your body can be used as a weapon of righteousness in the earth. Oh, glory be to God. I said glory be to God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law but under grace. Stop. Paul comes back here again. Sin does see, see, we're talking about something. It didn't say that you won't, you can't sin. It said sin doesn't have dominion. It doesn't have the authority to constrain you to obey it. Glory to God. Amen. Listen to the terminology. For sin shall not have the, didn't say you couldn't sin. It says that sin does not have the authority to constrain you to make you sin. The nature of sin no longer has its authority over you to make you do something. <laughs> For you're not under the law but under grace. What then? Paul comes back again. Shall we sin? We, Wayne we says this, shall we occasionally sin? Not, not habitually, but occasionally sin. Because we're not under the law, but under grace? Paul, God forbid! Other translations, don't let it be! Never let this, one says, never let this happen! Yeah. No, ye not. Listen, listen to this verse very carefully. Remember, you have been separated from the nature of sin. It no longer has dominion or authority to make you obey it. Amen. Know you not to whom you, you, ye, King James. The King James says ye. You just look at this, say, and ye, say this, say ye, means me. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Paul writes and says, even though you have been freed from the dominion of sin, if you yield yourself to it, it will enforce itself upon you. Ouch. Here we are. And you can keep off the mind because when we get into chapter 7 next week, we ain't going to get there this week. The schizo chapter. All right, chapter 7 is a schizophrenic chapter. Not really, it just seems that way. Because what chapter 7 really is, I'm just going to give you a little preview. Chapter 7 is Paul dealing with the warring of his flesh against his spirit and not knowing how to live above it. Chapter 8 is his revelation of how to live above it. It is not, it is not the state of Paul after he has the revelation of chapter 8. Glory to God. And people war all the time. There's, a, there's something working against them. There's something pulling on them. And see, we have to come to the understanding and the revelation that God has freed us from the dominion of the nature of sin. Remember I said this, sin here is the nature of sin. Or of obedience unto righteousness. That God be thanked that you were servants of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered unto you. Being then made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. What? We're walking in that new plane altogether, that newness of life. See, that nature's down here, but we're now walking up here. We're walking in a different plane. We're walking in a different realm. We don't have to walk down here. We can walk up here. Now, if you go down and walk down there, sin will jump on you. Because it's going to think it's got the right. And if you let it, it will, it, will, it will bind you. 
Now, a police officer might walk in here and say, I'm arrest you. And I say, what for? I don't, I don't have any cause to arrest you. I'm just going to arrest you. And I'm going to say, no, you're not. And I'm not going to let him put the handcuffs on me. You have to obey him. No, I don't. If he doesn't have just cause to arrest me, it's an illegal arrest. Okay, if I haven't done anything wrong, he cannot arrest me, and, you know, just, just for no reason. Matter of fact, he can go to jail for that. And most courts won't do anything about it, but, you know, he can't just arrest me without probable cause. He has no authority to arrest me when I haven't done wrong, when I haven't transgressed the law. And you understand, you've been justified, been declared righteous. You are no longer under the law, but under grace. Therefore, the laws of sin and death no longer have the right to enforce their will upon you. Amen. But being made free from the dominion of sin. I'm just going to keep putting that in there because that's really what it's saying. You became the service of righteousness. Now, I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. He said, I'm using natural allegories, basically. For as ye have yielded your members, service to uncleanness, and to iniquity, unto iniquity, even so now yield your members, service to righteousness, what? Unto holiness. This is one of the things that really bothers me about a lot of the things people are trying to teach today. They're trying to tell people it's okay to go back into fornication. It's okay to go back and get drunk. It's okay to go back and get high. It's okay to do all the things you used to do. It's all right because you're under grace. It doesn't matter. You're going to heaven anyway. And God's word's telling us that we should be yielding our members as servants to God and, the, and, and as your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. Unto holiness. What? Actions that represent the sanctified work in your spirit. It doesn't mean you're not going to mess up, but your members should be working in that direction instead of working in the opposite direction. We shouldn't be trying to find out how we can get away with being yielding our members as servants to unrighteousness and still make heaven. We should be yielding our members as servants of righteousness unto holiness. And here's the thing. If you're walking in that newness of life and that new plane all together and you're pursuing God and you're telling sin, no! Not by willpower but because it no longer has dominion over you. You've been freed from its authority. So you have the right to tell it no. <laughs> Woo! Amen? And the more you walk in that yielding your members as servants to righteousness, the more that will lead you into holiness. Not by default, not because you know, it automatically makes it happen, but because you have made a decision that you're not going to yield your members any longer to a, to, to a domain that no longer has the authority to enforce itself on you. So you're talking, you keep saying that over and over again. Yeah, I do. Because really he does. Throughout the whole chapter. Because people don't get it. They go to one stream or another. They think if you preach grace, and some people preach it, this, they preach it in a way. When they start going around telling everybody, you can live in fornication, and you can, you know, you can do this, and you can do that, and it doesn't matter because you're under grace. You are saying, let's continue in sin that grace may abound. And Paul said, never let this happen. I think it's Weiss that said that. Never let this happen. King James, God forbid. Then you get the other side, you know, that everything's a regulatory thing. If you, if, if you don't mess up, then God's going to hear your prayers. No. We are walking out of the newness of life. As we said earlier, the law of the spirit of life that's in Christ Jesus. We'll get that in chapter 8. And as we yield ourselves, servants to righteousness, and follow after the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, that is going to lead us step by step into the path of holiness. You won't have to be holy because you wore a beehive hairdo. And I say, I tell people, I grew up Pentecostal. We used to go down. I mean, we, we had uh, the women with those old, what they call beef hive hair. They just pile it up up here, never cut it. It'd be gray and yellow and all that stuff. They had bobby pins all in it. And you have a move with the Holy Ghost, and you had to put on safety goggles. Because bobby pins start going, bing, 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 
all over the church. Hello? <coughs> so you're mocking. No, I'm just making fun. I grew up there. That's how I grew up. And I'm going to tell you something. I thank God for my Pentecostal heritage because they knew some things about the Holy Ghost charismatics never learned. Amen. <laughs> Crazy Maddox, yeah. Or Cruise Maddox. Well, where I lost? Oh, holiness, verse 20, 19. Verse 20. For when you were servants of sin, you were free, separated from righteousness. For what fruit had you in those things whereof you are now ashamed? We should be ashamed of the things of the past, not trying to figure out how we can go back and do them. Come on now. People, people trying to figure out how they can get away with it when the Bible says in the past we were ashamed of them. Listen, why? For the end of those things is death. Now, it may not kill you spiritually and take you to hell, but it'll mess you up. It can shorten your natural life. It can kill your marriage. It can kill your job. It can kill, um, you know, your, your, like I said, your marriage. It, and it can kill you eventually, at least physically. And if you're messing around with it long enough, it can kill you spiritually. See, people think as long as I get to go to heaven, it's okay. And live? What kind of attitude is that? Jesus died identify with us, became sin for us, died for us. We, we, we died with him. He really took, he took all the penalty and the consequence of your sin so you could live in the blessing and the consequence of his resurrection. And then you want to go back and do the things he died for? Come on. What's wrong? Just as long as I make heaven, that's all that matters. Where's your love for the Father? Where's your love for the Son? Where's your love for the Savior and the Redeemer that you desire to live in the things that you once were ashamed of just as long as you make heaven? That is carnality on steroids. You can call it grace if you want to. It's carnality. Hello? No. What fruit had you in those things wherever you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now, being made free, separated from the dominion of sin, you have become servants to God. You have fruit unto holiness. And the end? Everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Sin has wages. Yielding your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto death has wages. And Satan will want his, he'll, he'll ante up on you. He's going to want his payday. Yeah, but I still get to go to heaven. If it was all about just getting you into heaven and nothing else mattered, God would just save people and take them right then. Right. Especially those who are just going to live in the flesh and be, let their bodies, their members be used as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin or unto death. We need to yield our members, servants unto God, yield ourselves unto God, and our members as servants of righteousness unto holiness. And some folks don't like to hear that word. Why? Because it means they can't sin. But I, I, I'm going to ask you a question. If you desire to be able to get away with sin, what's wrong with you? Yeah. What's wrong with your relationship with the Lord? Yeah. God is a holy God. How are you going to enter into his presence with the taint of sin on your members? And feel comfortable. That's one thing if you come repentant. God receives the penitent, penitent heart. But you come in cocky, 
and say it doesn't matter? Did you know? I, my friend Guy Dunnick said this recently. And uh, if, you don't, if you're not friends with Guy Dunnick on, on Facebook, you need to be. He's got some good stuff. And it's not spelled D U N S. I forgot. D U. Yeah, we'll put it up sometime. Yeah, it's, it's, a weird, it's, 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 it's pronounced one way, spelled another. But he said this. He said, God resists the proud as much as he gives grace to the humble. Because the scripture that says he gives grace to the humble first says he resists the proud. So if you're arrogant and cocky and think you can get away with all kinds of stuff, God resists you. If you come with a humble heart, and, you know, listen, if it's one thing to struggle with something, and, you know, and, and you, but I tell you what, if you'll, if you'll learn to live in this new life, you'll, you'll stop struggling. Yeah. You just humble yourself before God and say, thank you, Father, that Jesus died for me. Thank you, Father, that Jesus, Jesus paid the price for me. Sin has no more dominion. Listen, not just sin, not, not just a sin. The nature of sin no longer has dominion over me. You're dealing with something, just get up here and they say, the nature of sin no longer has dominion over me. And I say to you, nature of sin, no to, that, to whatever you're trying to get me to do. No. I walk in newness of life. I walk in a new plane altogether. Hallelujah. I walk in the newness of life. That life that's, the, the, that's, that's, that's consumed or, or is, in, is uh, in, embodied and the law of the spirit of life is in Christ Jesus. The law of the spirit of life that's in Christ Jesus has set us free. Eternally separated us from the law of the sin nature and death. I do not. You can, but I do not have to obey the dominion of sin. I'm no longer it's citizen. Hallelujah. I'm a stranger and a soldier and a strange. I'm a, I'm a soldier in a strange land. I'm an ambassador for Christ. What's that mean? I've got a diplomatic immunity over the authority of sin in this world. There's a banner on my vehicle. Jehovah Nisi. Our banner of victory. My diplomatic flag says, I got the banner of victory. Ooh, glory. I said, woo, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ha! Hallelujah. Yeah. And uh, I said, we're going to hoop a little bit. We'll get liturgical. We'll do it all. But you're flying the banner of diplomatic immunity because you're an ambassador for Christ, meaning that the laws of the world we're walking in, the spiritual laws of sin and death, no longer have dominion over me. They can't arrest me. They can't force me to obey them. And if they mess with me, a Holy Ghost aircraft carrier is going to show up. They'll be sandals on the ground not boots sandals that was a joke come on some of y'all kind of going huh angels you know <laughs> glory to god d-u-i-n-i-n-c-k it's like doing it doing it <laughs> okay i've known god for 30 plus years and still don't know how to say it <laughs> Glory to God. Anybody excited? Did it bless you? That's good preaching, Pastor Ed. I know it was. Man, I was so, I couldn't hardly wait to get here tonight. So full, I mean, I, when I saw that J.B. Phillips, that we walk in a, whole, a new plane all together, I'm like, woo, glory. That, 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 woo, glory. Never I cried, too, because it just blessed me so good seeing it said that way. You know, walking newness of life, that was good. That's good. That's good translation. But I'm telling you right now, walking a new plane all together. What plane is that? That's the plane where the righteous tread. That's the plane where Jesus treads. That's the plane where the law of the spirit of life that's in Christ Jesus has dominion. 
and has lifted me up above where I was raised up together and made to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I live out of that realm. That's the realm I live in. That's the realm I, my, my source of life comes from. That's the realm that empowers me to say no to sin. Now, a sin, yes, but it really what I'm, when I'm saying no to a sin, I'm saying no to the dominion of sin, the nature of sin, that you no longer have the right to enforce that on me. You had me at one time, yes, but I'm not there anymore. I've been delivered out of the kingdom of darkness, translated into the kingdom of his dear son, glory to God. He took every handwriting of ordinance that was against me and took it out of the way and nailed it to his cross and made a show of the demon spirits openly, Amen. triumphing, hallelujah, over them. My God. People teaching stupid stuff when they should be teaching this. They don't need to be teaching that grace is going to make you do it. They need to teach you that you've been free and you can walk in it because of what's in you. Yeah. Hallelujah. And man, when people get a revelation of this. Now, chapter 7, next week when we get into it, is Paul struggling in an arena when he didn't have the revelation. Because he finishes up chapter 7 and says, and, and what he says there in chapter 7, he starts out with, um, uh, <laughs> I was, sometimes you get so much going through your head. Oh, is the law sin? And he goes through the whole thing and proves the law is not sin, the law is holy. He concludes it that the law is not sin, but that he's, his wretched body wants to do this. And then he says this, who will deliver me? What's the answer? <laughs> Glory to God. Who will deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind I may, uh, myself may serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. But look, that's what that, he gets into chapter 8. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. The law of sin has no more dominion over us. We'll get into chapter 7 next. We can go through a little bit. You know. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.